Good morning, everybody. It's Lorraine Alternative Homesteading. It's February 27, 2024. Well, I wanted to respond to somebody who said that they have received those little burn marks. The one that they're side by side by side. Well, I have a photo for you. These, this is the pattern for stun gun burns. Let me show you. Okay, this photo was retrieved from Reddit. There are not a lot of photos of this on this topic. There is that one. And then there's this one. This is a stun gun attack. This looks like a burn. And let me scroll over. So anyway, um, I wanted to bring something to your attention. People, when I moved here, everybody kept asking me, Oh, do you, you own a gun? And it's like, no, I, I don't own a gun. I, I lived in New Jersey. In New Jersey, if you defend yourself in your own home, if somebody breaks into your home and you shoot them, it doesn't matter that somebody broke in, that you don't know them, that it was in the middle of the night or early in the morning, you're going to jail. And they couldn't believe it. They, I, they probably didn't even believe me. You know, here in Kentucky, they'll shoot at any damn thing, right? They'll shoot at your pets. They'll shoot, they'll shoot at your property. They'll shoot at your no trespassing signs. Yeah, that happens here in rural Kentucky. So anyway, um, here's an article from New Jersey. Intense debate. Identity revealed of man allegedly, allegedly killed, allegedly killed during a New Jersey house break-in. So he was either killed or not killed. It wasn't he, he was an allegedly, he either was or he wasn't. So he's either alive or unalive. Okay, so <laughs> this is a news break. This is the news break insightful interactions in New Jersey. Intense debate. Identity revealed of man allegedly killed during New Jersey house break-in. So the man was shot dead while allegedly breaking into a New Jersey house. He's identified. The recent news of a man, Sylvestri Maraquin, was shot dead while allegedly breaking into a house in Cumberland County, New Jersey, has stirred up a heated debate among the public. The resident, Kevin Lucero, admitted to shooting Maraquin, but, and, but, but unfortunately he was later arrested on gun charges. The second intruder remains at large, and the incident is still under investigation. Okay, so this guy goes to jail because he used a gun on an intruder. He unalived him, and then the other intruder got away. So now it says that the comments section is filled with a diverse range of opinions, reflecting the complexity of the situation. I don't know, guys. I don't know what's so complex about the situation. You're asleep in your house. What was it, like 4 o'clock in the morning? Two intruders break into your house. You don't know them. You shoot them and one dies and one gets away. What's so complicated about that? It's not complicated to me. So a significant number of users express their support for the resident. Me, I'm raising my hand, arguing that he had the right to defend his home and his life. He does have a right. They criticize the New Jersey laws that led to his arrest, arguing that the laws should protect homeowners in such situ situations. Well, guess what, folks? They don't. And I have been saying this for years. I've even had arguments with people 
on the next door app when I lived in New Jersey. They were saying, oh, no, 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 no. If you shoot somebody in your house that, and they're breaking in, you have a right to defend your house. And I kept saying, no, you're wrong. You shoot somebody, whether you shoot them and they die or you shoot them and they don't die, you're still going to jail. Everybody would be on my case and it's like, no, read the law. Read it because it is cloaked in ambiguity. Totally cloaked. Just like most of the laws, they're cloaked in ambigu ambiguity. What, however they want to use it, they use it. So this guy whose home was broken into, defending his home, unalives an intruder who may have even wanted to take this homeowner's own life, is now in jail. So now, other on the other hand, there were also comments emphasizing the importance of abiding by the law, even in self-defense situations. Really? I'm going to tell you folks, I watch way too many uh, YouTube police reporters uh, videos. Way too many. And let me tell you, very few and far between do I see the police doing the good damn deeds that they're supposed to do when they're out in the public. They are unaliving people. They're torturing animals. They have killed thousands of dogs. They have asset stripped people. They have broken into the wrong homes and then refused to accept responsibility for not even looking up the name and address of the person while, while breaking in. I don't know. Maybe those are the ones that are targeted and the police, that's just their side hustle. And then you've got all the ones that are breaking the law by deleting video camera footage. Or how about when they mute their body camera or turn it away or turn it off? How about the guy, you know, they start stun gunning people without reading them their rights handcuffing them without reading them their rights. Oh, they read them their rights after they get into the squad car. So there's always an agenda here. So now it says, on the other hand, there were comments emphasizing the importance of abiding by the law, even in self-defense situations. There were also comments that expressed frustration towards law enforcement, suggesting that they should focus more on finding the second intruder rather than arresting the resident. I agree with that. Public stance on the news is divided. Yeah, well, of course, you know, they're going to have people, they're always going to be people defending the cops. But anyway, yes, I watch listed for speaking the truth. This is a little mini painting by Sawlight on eBay. Now, I received a text message today that says, just last week, under a cloak of secrecy, our government ran through a new federal contract for Beagle, Beagle the dog, breeding at Marshall Farms, a factory farm that sells puppies for experimentation at the National Institute of Health, NIH. Marshall Farms just got a green light for $25,000 of your tax dollars to birth puppies and ship the newborns to the NIH's blood poisoning lab. These sweet beagles will be deprived of food and water and pumped full of bacteria. Merciless bureaucrats will also slit their throats. Remember in Vigo? Remember the 4,000 beagles? The hellhole? Maybe even worse. Marshall's greedy corporate executives locked the puppies in cages so filthy... They open bags of dog foods are contaminated with rodent feces. As the White Coast Wade Inve West, uh, Waste Inve Investigator, I can tell you the most effective way to shut down a government experiment is to stop it as quickly as possible. Otherwise, Marshall Farms' latest beagle abuse could be on the federal payroll for years to come. So this is time sensitive. If you agree... Please rush 
your generous gift while well, they're asking for a donation and stuff. Uh, this is Claudia Taylor, WCW Research and Investigations Associate. Shut down Marshall Farms selling and breeding Beagle Puppies. Beagle Puppies. Your tax dollars. Hard at work. So anyway, let's go back. I found more stun gun pictures. So anyway, here my birds are... They're a ruckus. There's a ruckus going on out there. Let's see. Uh, there are going to be different patterns. Uh, this is the one... This is exactly what appeared on my leg last year. They almost look like cigarette burn marks, but cigarettes, and I don't smoke cigarettes, uh, a, a cigarette butt circular pattern is a little bit larger than these. So anyway, I'm going to end on that note. Please hit the thumbs up. Like, comment, subscribe if you haven't already done so. Hit the notifications bell to get notifications because you know we're shadow banned. And I appreciate everybody and welcome newcomers. This is Lorraine Alternative Homesteading signing off for now.